Okay. Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to the first session of Admitted Students Week uh, for the University of Chicago Crown Family School of Social Work Policy and Practice. Uh, I'm Ron Martin, he, him, his, Director of Admissions. And I know that I'm speaking for all of us here and all of us in Crown uh, when I say congratulations on your admission and that we're all very excited that you're joining us today for our virtual session. I said this today, uh, or I said this on Saturday during our in-person event, um, and it's definitely worth repeating. Every year we receive applications um, from just the best applicants. Uh, this year is no exception. We have a tremendous class coming in. And again, we're just very excited that you're here joining us. Um, you know, you are all making a very big decision uh, academically, professionally, and financially. Uh, a graduate degree is an investment in yourself. You know, we know that. Uh, and so I want to assure each of you uh, that we believe in you and that this is the program for you. So this week, uh, we have a series of sessions that give us the opportunity to showcase our programs and for you to hear about what makes the Crown Family School stand out. Um, we are hoping that by the end of the week, after hearing the sessions, those of you who have already accepted the offer will feel like you made the right decision. And for those of you who are still deciding that you'll think to yourself, um, yeah, I, I want to do my degree. I want to I want to do my program here at Crown. Uh, a reminder uh, to you all that our sessions will be recorded, recording this one, and made available later. Um, that includes the sessions that we had during our in-person event on Saturday. We'll be posting those, and we'll send out emails when the recordings are finally posted. Um, events like this with the in-person event, with all these sessions, uh, it's a group effort. It is is not one person. There are a lot of people who make the Admitted Student Week, uh, the, the day and the week happen. Um, so thanks to Aliyah McKessie and Jamal Banks, our Assistant Directors of Admission, to Emma Toomey, our admission specialist. I know many of you have been in contact with all three and myself um, over the past weeks and months. Um, to Sid Ulovicious and Russell Linder for their AV support and with recording. And today's presenters, who are, will, you'll be hearing from in just a moment, uh, the Dean of Students Diversity and Inclusion, Kristen Reed Solomon, our colleagues in the Dean of Students Office. And then also, you know, thanks now to our presenters on Wednesday, including the field education team and to our student ambassadors. So before we get started, um, I just want to say just one other thing. I often talk about Crown being experiences in three parts. Um, we have the academic, um, so we definitely have the classes, the curriculum uh, that students are participating in, and we have the experiential. So there's the whole field placement process in which you get to, so you're in the academic and the classroom, you're, you're learning about social work, in the field experience, you're doing social work, but there's a whole other piece to a graduate education. And I like to highlight this because I know when I think about my own graduate experience, how much of this was lacking, and then every day I'm reminded how much we do here. And that's sort of the co-curricular experience that students have. And you're going to be hearing in a moment about all the supports and resources. You'll be hearing about the programming. Um, we also have our Career and Leadership Development Office um, that puts on a number of so, um, sessions and sort of professional-based experiences over the course of the year. We have civic engagement for our students to participate in. And then also thinking beyond sort of the time in the classroom, I often also say that coming to Crown, it's more than just a one or two or three year experience based on your program. It's a lifetime sort of uh, relationship. You, you know, thinking about the alumni network that you'll be going into later. So there's a whole lot that goes into the graduate, the graduate experience There's a whole lot that happens here at Crown. And with that, I would like to turn it over to our Dean of Students office, uh, starting Kristen Reed Solomon and the team who will introduce themselves and give you a little bit more presentation about all the supports and resources that we have here at Crown. And Kristen. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ron. And welcome, everyone. Congratulations on your admission to the University of Chicago and the Crown Family School. Um, I echo everything that Ron said. Um, we're so excited that you applied, that you've considered us as a part of your academic journey. And we hope that if you haven't already said yes, all the information you learned this week will help you with making that, that final decision. Um, so as Ron said, my name is Kristen Reed Solomon. My pronouns are she, her, um, and I'm the Dean of Students, Diversity and Inclusion for Crown. Um, I have the pleasure and honor of leading the best team at Crown, our Dean of Students office um, that comprises admissions, advising, career and leadership development, um, and all of the fun stuff, the heart of the school. Um, I've been at Crown for seven years and um, have been in this role for a little over two. And I'll turn it over to my other colleagues to introduce themselves now. Hi, 
Can you like to go? Go for it. Hi, everyone. My name is Courtney Ross. I serve as your assistant dean of students here at Crown County School. Um, so in this role, um, oh, got a gamut of things. So from orientation to advising to graduation to all those it's and bits and things in between. So we're so glad that you are here with us today. So great to meet you all. Hi, everyone. My name is Dana Asantiapia. I use she, her pronouns. I am the assistant director of academic support here at the Crown Family School. Um, yeah, it comes with a lot of different things, including um, orientation, graduation, advising, um, and lots of emails and um, in, in a good way, if that can be said in a good way. <laughs> um, you'll get lots of emails from us. Um, but very much looking forward to um, seeing you all and also hopefully seeing you come in the fall or the summer for advanced standing students. Awesome. All right. I'm going to share my screen right now so we can get into our presentation. All right. Okay, so again, welcome. Uh, we are representing a larger team of about 11. Um, you can see all of our smiling faces here, and this is how we always are. Hope you all you know that when you come to our office, you're going to see us. We're always willing to help. Uh, we have a lot of experience in higher education, student affairs. Some of us have social work backgrounds, um, but we're we're always ready and willing to help. Uh, we empathize a lot. We've been students ourselves, graduate students, and so um, we know how, um, how rigorous this program can be, um, but also how rewarding it can be. So... Um, this is just our names and some of our titles. Again, we're all um, leading different areas um, of your experience while you'll be a student here. Um, so you'll interface with all of us at different times. And of course, you've had good experience already with all of our um, awesome admissions team who always brings in a great class of students every year. Okay, turn over right. to you. Yeah, so this is just an overview of our... Um... Our presentation, what we'll kind of talk about. Uh, we're kind of really scratching the surface here a little bit. Um, we go a lot deeper into some of these things during the orientation sessions. So this is just kind of like a quick overview of some of the things that are part of our office. So we'll go about, we'll talk about some quick facts, um, talk about times of transition, mainly orientation that will come up um, as, as you all transition to um, being students here at Crown. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about academic advising, class registration, um, touch over some student key student resources, um, and talk about the opportunity to opt into the CTA UPASS program, which we'll discuss more, and also share some highlights from the Chicago grad, including their housing resources, and have some time for questions at the end. Awesome. And uh, team, feel free if there's any questions in the chat that you want to, you know, drop in, interrupt it as you need to. Okay. Okay, so just a couple quick facts about our office and where we're located. Um, so when you come to campus, if some of y'all have been or if you haven't been yet, um, you'll know that our uh, many of our classes, um, most of our faculty have offices in our Edith Abbott Hall building. That's our, our main building. Um, and then we have another building on campus that's just right behind it, our Woodlawn Social Services um, Center. Um, that building is where our entire Dean of Students office is located. We're on the first floor. We have a fun lounge right outside with the TV there too. So love to have folks around, spending some time building community together. Um, as I mentioned, um, the, um, the different departments within DOS is admissions, advising, career leadership, and then we also manage um, your crown scholarship as it relates to student finances. There are larger offices, our graduate financial aid or our bursar's office that manage other pieces of the, of the financial process, but know that your crown scholarship in particular is managed by our office. Um, and yeah, we've got lots of different programs, events initiatives, policies that we manage and um, try to make sure are um, thoughtful, are inclusive, um, yeah, all year. So um, our main mission is really um, providing a positive um, experience for students, making sure that you have the support and advocacy needed to have a, you know, um, a really impactful and a successful um, experience while you're here. And we just hope to assist you in any way as you're hoping you're looking to achieve um, your goals and dreams um, through this program. So um, that's just a little bit about us and a map um, of where our office is. So our main building, Edith Abbott Hall, and then just right across from the parking lot um, is where our office is located. So um, that's important to know if you come to campus or you plan on visiting. Over. Awesome. So um, now that you know where we are, uh, let's talk about some graduate school transitions. Um, like I said, the main one that's going to be the most pertinent and urgent for you all will be new student orientation. 
Um, orientation, as I'm sure many of you may have experienced before at different various institutions and places, is a time for community building, sharing of campus resources, talking about logistics with curriculum and classes and all the nitty gritty of the details of learning a new institution, um, while also having fun and getting to know new people. Um, we, we also um, partner with the Chicago grad. Uh, they have uh, other pre-orientation programs and um, resources that will be emailed out to you as well over the summer um, for students who are um, coming and um, have accepted their admissions here. Um, some de details about the dates of orientation so you can mark them on your calendars. Uh, for advanced standing, our orientation will be early June because the summer quarter starts in June. Um, the 5th and the 6th, Wednesday, Thursday, all day, um, advanced standing orientation. We also have a separate orientation um, for international students. International students also join into the full-time um, orientation as well, but we have a separate day just for international students on a Wednesday, September 18th. All of these events will be in person. Um, then we have an orientation session for our social sector leadership master's program, extended evening social work program, and part-time day social work program on a Saturday, September 14th. So that's just an orientation for, for you all on a Saturday. Typically, people in these programs tend to work full-time, uh, so we have that orientation over a weekend day. Um, for your convenience and so that the most most people that can attend as possible. And then the largest orientation that we have is our full-time um, social work PhD orientation sessions um, over three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, September 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Um, part of Tuesday, September 24th um, is UChicago grads larger orientation on campus as well. So um, yeah, there's lots of resources. It might feel like drinking from a fire hose at some points of time, but um, we do our best to make sure that um, it's not too, too overwhelming and that you have access to resources after if you can't retain all of the information at the moments that you're being presented them. All right. So one of the main sorts of sources of supports that we offer is around academic advising. We work really closely with the curriculum team um, to know what are the ins and outs of your program, know what courses you need, what requirements there are, um, all of those you know good important things. Again, the whole point of you coming to this program. So um, our office serves as one of your main advisors um, between Courtney and Dana. We've split up um, our different programs and um, students are able to meet individually uh, with an advisor. Um, of course, we offer lots of other ways for you to keep track of your program and requirements. Um, but in terms of meeting with an advisor, having a go-to person, um, your Dean of Students um, advising team is going to be your main go-tos. Um, we will assist, of course, with um, letting you know any kind of program requirements, policies, course registration, and of course, connecting you to larger resources um, that will help you in your academic journey. We also have faculty advisors for students. Um, all students, you know, no matter what program, are assigned a faculty advisor during the autumn quarter. Um, usually midway through the autumn quarter, um, you'll have a chance to, you'll um, receive an email, you'll get your faculty advisor's contact information, they will receive yours, um, and they will usually meet with their group of advisees sometime in that first quarter. Um, your faculty advisor is a general assignment, and so it may not be someone matched directly with your specific interests, but um, they are a full-time faculty member here so they know a lot more about the school, the program, the courses offered, um, which faculty have research interests in certain areas. So they're meant to be just a great starting point and resource for you. Um, and also they can answer questions about, you know, courses or writing or any kind of tips um, as it relates to your professional goals or what you might be hoping to do. Um, so know that we encourage you to, um, in addition to this faculty advisor, to build relationships with any faculty member here who might be, you know, have, um, um, have the same interest area as you. Um, so while you'll be assigned this advisor, we encourage you to build relationships with any and all faculty um, that you can. Um, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll give more information about that faculty advisor once you get here um, in the fall. Um, and then last but certainly not least, you have excellent support from our field education staff. Um, through um, the field team, you have their staff. You also have um, a field uh, liaison and then a field supervisor at your, your field practicum site. 
Um, so you have lots of support um, on the field education side too. Um, so field is a part of the curriculum. So they're, you know, I would consider them a part of the curriculum team. I mean, certainly they will share a lot more information about um, their process and, and the different types of support that they offer. Um, but know that we all work together. We meet regularly, um, the field team, um, the DOS team, the curriculum team, to make sure that we're all aligned on um, what your requirements are, if there's been any changes, if there are new any, any updates that need to be shared to, to, to students. Um, we're doing our best to work together um, to support you as best as possible. Um, so yeah, all this to say, you've got lots of support. Excellent support. Yes, awesome. So um, some other academic and it's advising support resources for students here. Um, we have we know writing is a big part of grad school, big part of uh, social sciences program, um, social work being in that realm. You'll be doing a lot of writing, a lot of academic writing, some reflection writing, but nonetheless, um, documenting a lot of your thoughts and feelings and researches and interest areas. And uh, to help support with that, uh, there are a lot of different writing services in-house here at Crown and also broadly on campus through Chicago grad. Um, as you see, that's linked here. Um, they're writing support specialists um, at UChicago grad. We also have a writing support specialist here who works specifically with Crown students um, with master's and PhD students. Um, his name is Daniel Listo. Um, students typically just email him and ask to schedule a time to meet to talk about their papers, their structures, any different questions you have about academic writing, citations, all those fun details. Um, so there's definitely a lot of support with writing you can get here. So please don't be intimidated. Um, please be, but we encourage students to be proactive and to reach out um, when they need help. And we're happy to uh, help connect you in any way as well. Um, also, we have a student disability services office here on campus. Um, they on their website have information on how to start that uh, a process for applying for accommodations. Um, so we always um, ask students to start with them and get that process started. And then um, we, we connect back in and, and communicating that with your faculty members and always um, encourage and support students in um, having that conversation with their faculty members about how their accommodations will look like and be applied in the classroom. Um, so we definitely have support services there. Um, there are also, of course, teaching assistants in the classrooms as well. Um, in some cl larger classes, typically, um, that um, work alongside faculty as well in um, instructing and answering questions or just offering additional support to students in um, certain classes. Also, another great resource, because we know that um, students are whole people um, and definitely uh, want to support your mental health, your physical health, your overall sense of well-being while here at the University of Chicago. The Chicago Wellness is um, a center on campus that has robust resources and services. That includes, of course, um, what you might think of when you think of wellness and, and uh, CAPS and um, psychological and counseling services. Um, we have a liaison on their staff therapy team, um, Jessica Wachowski. So she um, is definitely someone that we've connected students with just to have someone you actually know and a human you're emailing with that can help you connect with different um, counseling services there. But also Chicago Wellness just has a lot of like cool things and different events. Like I saw a TV slide here uh, at the um, Edith Abbott Hall about an art therapy event that they're doing this week, which is really cool. Um, so they just have a lot of different like ways for students to like unwind and just decompress. Um, and I yeah really appreciate that they really are pushing a lot of different resources other than just like um, counseling services, which are important. But wellness is very, uh, we try to have a holistic perspective. Um, another program that they have is the Academic Skills Assessment Program, or ASAP. Um, that is a very helpful program for, like, just getting over, like, certain, like, coming maybe coming back to school or just figuring out, like, how to get over procrastination, um, get some study skills or some organization down packed for figuring out how to organize a busy schedule and still keep up with school um, and all, all the other obligations you might have. So that's another great support service, service as well through your Chicago Wellness. Uh, another support service we have, uh, another service that we offer is uh, we have a, a librarian in-house, Holiday Vega. Um, you can connect with uh, them about uh, questions about research, how to navigate the library system, um, which, you know, libraries are pretty universal, but also being in a new environment and knowing like where books are and where the libraries are housed throughout the university. Um, Holiday is your person to help you with that. 
Um, also, we have research guides on the library website for the University of Chicago library system, um, and Holly can help you um, with navigating that as well. Uh, typically, Holly might do some um, workshops, um, sessions during the autumn quarter especially, so um, you have time to think about that, but once you get here um, and during orientation, you'll probably hear more about those um, as well, and you'll hear more from Holiday as well during orientation. And lastly, but definitely, definitely not least, is you have each other. <laughs> you have your fellow classmates, colleagues. Um, we um, really encourage students to see each other as a source of support. Um, you all come with a wealth of knowledge, um, but also we hope that um, you all see each other as human and can help support one another throughout your time in the program here. Thank you, Dana. There we go. All right. So something certainly as new students coming in, everybody wonders about how will I be registered for courses? Um, hopefully um, you all have some uh, at least um, understanding that course registration looks different at different institutions. And so um, we will be doing our absolute best to make sure you have all the information that you need ahead of your specific start time. So depending on when uh, which program you're in and when you're starting, um, that will dictate when you will hear from us regarding course registration. Um, so for advanced standing students, you're going to hear from us pretty much this week, I think, um, about registration um, because um, registration for summer courses will start soon. And for students in our full-time part-time or EEP programs, you will hear from us in August regarding registration. Uh, we will do a group advising session with students where it'll sort of be an open Zoom. We'll go through registration. Um, we'll go through what the process is of what you got to do to select and or rank your classes. Um, and you'll be able to ask any questions that you need. Um, our schedule, even for next year, won't be available until mid-summer. So um, at least for, for full-time students and, and courses for next year, um, we won't have those till mid-summer. So it makes sense that we would reach out until August, you know, anyway. Um, so know that that's coming if you're you're wondering about that. Um, there'll be lots of communication about that. So make sure that you're checking your emails, both the email that you use to apply, but also your UChicago email. Um, now that you're coming, um, you'll want to make sure you're checking that email for any kind of important um, news and updates. Um, and that connects to the next piece about making sure now that you've got a CNET ID and password that you're logging into the necessary systems, you're clearing any holds, you're providing all your emergency contact information, you know, all of those sort of, you know, logistical um, things that we need to know um, right as you start. So um, if you do have a hold on your account, know that that um, we wouldn't be able to, to get you registered for classes. So that will certainly um, delay some things. But if you're logging in early um, and you're checking it now, even throughout the summer, um, you shouldn't have any issues being registered when the time comes. Um, and then for our full-time, part-time, and EEP students, um, a couple of your core classes, um, at least one of these we actually know, just heard an update um, that um, um, all students will actually take the same HUBSI course. HUBSI stands for Human Behavior in the Social Environment course. So for, again, full-time, part-time, and EEP students, that will be a course everyone takes, and there won't be a, a transcript review or a a um, an advanced you know um, section of that course it will be one section for all they're doing some some really great um, curriculum updates to that course right now um, however for the research course we have an intro to research course 302 there will be a, an exam that students can opt to take um, late summer early fall um, so if you've taken you know research courses before or have extensive experience with research um, you'd be able to take this course and, and see if you qualify for an advanced research course but again make sure you're checking those emails, staying in contact with us. We're going to send that information out as it gets closer to the start of the next academic year. Okay. All right. Let's switch Great. to talk about re resources. Yeah. So certainly, Mac and you know, Yushikar wants to mention that briefly. Um, this is a little bit more information about um, all their services, um, their health center, um, can make an appointment. Uh, same with their counseling center, their numbers are there. Um, they're also on their website. Their website's pretty well laid out. Um, so all this information is on there as well. 
Um, they also have health promotion and wellness uh, appointments as that you can make um, as a student. Any student can um, opt into these services um, if you pay the student services fee, um, which every program does pay for the student services fee with the exception of the extended evening social work program, but you can opt in and choose to pay that fee per quarter if you want to, it's $466 a quarter. Um, the reason why uh, EEP students aren't automatically opting in is because we figure most of the classes tend to be in the evenings for that program as of now. So um, yeah, and these services, services tend to be during the day, um, but you're more than welcome to opt in if you want, just let us know. We're happy to help you with that. Um, also, UChicago Wellness manages the UShip, the Student Health Insurance Program. Um, if you have questions about that, um, please go uh, you can find a lot of FAQ page on their website about UShip, which is super, super helpful. So I really also always recommend students start there with the FAQ page. You can also call and um, ask some questions directly as well. And um, that phone number is here and it's also listed on their website. So students have to choose whether or not they're opting in and opt or opting out into health insurance. So please make sure to pay attention to those emails when you get them. Um, U Chicago Wellness also manages the immunization records process of you getting in those records to them. This is probably the prime, the number one hold that gets put on students' accounts, which prevents them from registering for classes, is to not have your immunization records up to date with U Chicago Wellness. So definitely, definitely recommend paying attention to those emails from them around student insurance and the immunization records to make sure your account is all up to date. Um, New Chicago Wellness Center is not located too far from our building in Edith Abbott Hall. And I know some of you might have been on campus, some of you might not have been on campus yet, but it's right across um, what we call the Midway, um, which is a green patchy area um, with one way streets, so it's easy to cross. So it's, it's super, it's not too far, which is great. Um, and the Wellness Center is very nice. It was recently remodeled as well. All right. Um, so um, another great resource uh, on campus is UChicago Grad. I know Dana talked about UChicago before. They just have a wealth of resources. Um, so we really, really encourage you to um, um, to utilize them. They will have a Canvas site that they will invite all new students to where you can go through modules and hear a little bit more about the different departments and areas within UChicago Grad and within campus and student life in general. So we're sort of like a mini, you know, student affairs-ish unit within Crown, but know that there's, again, much larger uh, resources that you can take advantage of. So um, go through those modules when you have a chance so you're aware of all your resources. Um, but one of the main things that new students will utilize them for is housing. Um, they have really, really great housing resources. Um, I'm not sure how many are from Chicago or new to Chicago, but we usually have a really kind of balanced mix of folks who are from the area and folks who are new every year. And so, you know, figuring out where to live and, and what your resources are in terms of housing um, can be really important. So, um, if you go on your Chicago grads um, site on um, their housing resources section, you'll find information around um, just um, the different neighborhoods, how you might choose a place to live, how you might browse, you know, certain type of apartments, um, information for folks who might have families or with disabilities, how you could find a roommate if you're kind of looking generally. Also, you know, um, shout out our Facebook group um, for newly admitted students. That, that could be another great place for finding roommates specifically within Crown. Um, but their site also has has different tips for renters, you know, for some folks, if you're coming straight from undergrad, this could be a, a first, you know, put time you're living in an apartment. So what do you do with leases? And what's what's the deal with the utility? All of those things. Um, they have so many great resources. And then they also have some webinars that you can join in. Um, and, and just, you know, you're welcome to contact them either via email or set up a time to talk with somebody on their team um, if you have some specific questions. And of course, we're always happy to help too. There's some of us who are either from Chicago or have to move here ourselves. So are happy to always share our own perspective perspectives um, on uh, where we might have lived or how we looked for apartments um, even. So um, so yeah, know that that's absolutely a really great resource we we recommend if you're new to Chicago or if, even if you're from here, always helpful to, to, to get these tips. Absolutely. Um, so now we talked about we talked about where to live. Let's talk about how to get around. Um, so 
Uh, some might, may or may not be familiar with uh, what we call the CTA, Chicago Transit Authority. So the University of Chicago has an agreement with the CTA um, to create, have this UPASS program. And it's not just the University of Chicago, it's other actually universities across the city um, have this program where students can opt in to um, get a, something called a UPASS, which is a Ventra card uh, or a, a transit card where you can pipe or swap, swipe, swap, swipe uh, to ride the train or uh, take the bus around the city. Um, so all Crown students are eligible to opt into this program if you wish. Um, it, it offers unlimited rides on CTA buses and trains each quarter. Um, the only time where it's act, not active is over the winter break. Um, so uh, throughout the all, all throughout this academic year, it's on, it's turned on except for winter break um, between December and January. Um, in order to opt in, we will send a um, survey out. So for advanced standing students who start in June, that survey will be sent to you sometime in May. Um, for all other students who are starting at the end of September, that survey will be sent out to you late August. Um, so please fill that out if you do want the U Pass. Um, if you we don't hear from you, then assume you don't want it. Um, so to please fill out the survey if you do. Um, it's $125 a quarter, but that's for unlimited rides. That's also a price point that's not set by us, it's set by, this, by CTA and the agreement they have with the university, just so uh, there's that context there. Um, but this travel cost breakdown here shows kind of how um, it is a great, better deal than just paying to swipe or paying to access the train or the bus um, on your own for like five days a week. I think that that's what this five to six days a week, that's what this breakdown is and the costs are there. So you see that $125 is, is less than 180 and 200. So um, it could be a, a very helpful deal, especially if you don't plan on bringing your car um, to the city or you plan to not to drive your car much um, because parking is, it is what it is here. And so there's a lot of ways to be strategic about it. And one of them can be incorporating a U-Pass into, um, into your situation when you come to Chicago or when you come start school at Crown. There's a $50 replacement fee, so keep that in mind. Um, we distribute the U-Passes during orientation, so that's when you get them. Um, there would be a lot more information in the email instructions and directions for how to opt in and opt out um, that will be sent to all incoming students at the appropriate times. So yeah. Okay. I don't know why I thought, oh, we got some more to go through, but yeah, we're at questions already. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're going to break here and see what questions you all have about some of the things we shared um, or anything at all. Is it, oh, I see one already. Mm -hmm. Is it difficult to find parking on campus? You know, it depends on the time of day. I think you know, during sort of the regular working hours, it can be. Don't forget that, you know, you've got lots of staff and faculty who work at the university as well as the hospital staff. Mm -hmm. So um, University of Chicago Medicine is a large organization. We are one of the biggest employers on the south side of Chicago. So know that that factors into parking. However, um, after four o'clock, the lots around our areas, the parking lots are open. You don't need a uh, permit to park. So if you're doing evening classes, there's absolutely great parking. Um, and if you're willing to walk a couple of blocks around the building, you can also find parking in the residential streets around our specific building. Luckily, we're in a spot where we have that option. I know other places, you know, within campus, maybe not, you know, aren't always. But um, so, yeah, I would say it depends. But we know people who have consistently found free parking their entire time. It's been years. So it can be done. Mm -hmm. Um, Alita, I know you're probably one, I think you're a parker um, without a parking, without wisely not paying to park. I don't know if you have anything to says to add to jump mm -hmm. in because Kristen and Courtney I all pay for parking. <laughs> yeah, and don't get me wrong, for about four years, I also did not pay. So okay. like I've, yeah. I've shifted now, but I didn't for about four and, and it worked. So. Okay, okay. That's all good. Okay. Yeah, anyone had any quick tips? I don't, I definitely don't. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I think it's exactly what Kristen said. It's all about timing. I will say as a student, I only part drove if I had an evening course um, because the the class ended at 830. It just made more sense then. But for any daytime course, I did not drive because parking is 
um, is tough. If you're if you're committed to being there for a full day, like if you get here at 830, you can probably find parking pretty easily. Um, so I had friends that lived in like in the suburbs who couldn't, you know, couldn't get here, would have taken two hours to commute. So they, you know, would just get here at like 8 a.m. and just do homework for the hour and a half before class started. And then they would always be able to find parking pretty quickly. So it's all about, yeah, just just figuring out your day and and we're seeing what works best for you when it comes to street parking specifically. Uh, I see a question too about parking permits. So I know it's on the same. Um, I believe the permits are a little around 100 to 120 per quarter. That's my understanding. But I know the, the, the rates are online, but it is quarterly. Um, I don't think it's super difficult, but um, you'd want to get in there early. That's for sure. Um, and be open to, because there's different lots on campus. So yeah, um, that's something to think about. But on the parking website, they have all of the details, the rates and how to um, sign up. Okay, I see lots of questions. So I'm trying to see where else to begin. Um, for field placements for Mississippi full-time, what are some of the type of organizations we are placed in? You said it. I mean, it really runs the gamut. Nonprofits, hospitals, clinics, community organizations, schools, um, um, you know, yeah, university offices and departments. So, I mean, it really, it really depends. Um, on your field survey, you'll definitely give them some of your preferences and that'll help with um, how they're um, able to, to match you in the summertime. Um, you'll get your match sometime in late summer. Um, and if you have questions about that match or, or are concerned, you, the field team is absolutely willing to talk with you, answer any questions. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Also for field, the field session um, virtually will be Wednesday at 12 Central. Um, so they'll be able to answer that in much more detail. Um, and it will also be recorded. So if you're not able to attend live, um, we'll record it and post it as well. Awesome. Okay. Let's see. So and also see about the FAFSA. Um, you are right in line with, with everyone. You're mm -hmm. right on. The FAFSA has had some larger delays. Um, Ron, are you were you coming on to speak on that right now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I am gonna do the presentation later um at six o'clock central. Um I'll talk a little bit about FAFSA then, but um I can say now, like yeah, the delays in FAFSA have definitely had an impact. It's nationally, it's all institutions, so it's definitely just not crown, it's definitely not just University of Chicago. The, um, the Graduate Financial Aid Office is very much in tune with this. They know that we have summer start students. Um, they've assured me and I keep bugging them to make sure that they don't forget that we have summer start students. And so um, they're gonna start processing as soon as they can. We've been sending our financial data to them. Um, we, the, they have the student records. So it's just a matter of receiving the FAFSA data from the government and matching it. And then they'll send out process those uh, full package awards as soon as they can. Um, but yeah, they're they're sort of they're they're frustrated. I think everyone's a little frustrated uh, on, on across the board with how the how it's been delivered or handled or whatever. But yes. Great. Thank you. Appreciate that, Ron. Okay, I know lots of uh, lots of things. Changes to the curriculum. Absolutely, there's some really exciting updates for folks in the full time EEP, um, and more so in terms of updates. It's more of a reorganization of our our current structure. So our courses, um, the level of rigor, um, the topic areas, a lot of that is still continuing. So um, so know that. However, um, we're doing some some things in terms of reorganization. Um, is there going to be a curriculum session, or I've got I think we've got the recording um, of the session that we did from the weekend, so that'll be provided to everyone. I think it's important for the the deputy dean and the director of the program to give you that um, that general overview. Um, but essentially, um, we just shift it from just from students choosing between two concentrations, either direct practice clinical or um, social administration. Um, to being able to opt into a more integrated um, program and to choose certain pathways focused on topic areas. And so you can see that reflected on the website. We do have you know, new, um, a, a new section around what those sort of new updates look like. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers a at least a little bit um, about those curriculum changes. And we'll talk a lot more in detail about those when folks get here in the fall. Okay, summer schedule that's coming out soon. Um, thank you, Emma, for replying to that question. Um, enrollment deposit. Um, I think our typical due date has been April 15. Did you already reply to that? Maybe. No, um, 
You know, typically the enrollment deposit is made at the point where the student then accepts the offer. Um, we are not rigid about when, so we don't actually have like a set like deadline that has to be by this point. Also know that the deposit goes back into your tuition as well. Um, and we do not hold back any information based on receiving that deposit. So if it takes you longer to pay it, um, that's fine. If it needs to be waived, um, you, know, you can certainly ask us about that as well. Um, but but certainly there's there's no specific deadline for when the deposit has to be paid. Thank you. Um, will there be a session about Kephart specific specifically admissions team? Someone asked about that. We don't have one specifically said this year, but if anyone wants to know, we do have the YouTube recording on our admissions YouTube page um, of a the Kephart webinar. Um, that was held back in, I think it was September, October, back in the fall. And so that is readily viewable if you go to the YouTube page. I just want to shout out the the, the team. I see y'all all in the chat with the mm -hmm. links. You all are on top of it. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. What haven't we answered? There's some questions about you ship and if it's, um, the ability to opt out and when all that happens, if that hasn't been answered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely there's the ability to opt out. It may not be visible right now for fall starts. Mm -hmm. um, they are still, I know for summer, um, that um, it should just be opening up for summer folks. So, um, but absolutely there's the ability to opt out. You'll have to prove that you've got comparable coverage, um, you know, from wherever, either employer, family, however it might be. Um, so they'll have an, op an option to do that. And yes, it is automatically. So if you don't, if you don't opt out, they will opt you in um, by the deadline. And the deadline is usually sometime October. in October. Yeah. yeah, early to mid October. So have time. Other questions, team? Another note about financial aid. So if you have questions about like a tuition scholarship, um, that might have been uh, that you might have seen in your admission letter. Um, those questions can come come back to Crown to the admissions team or to me directly. If it's a question about FAFSA, about federal financial aid loans, about work study, those questions should go directly to the graduate financial aid office. So just to clarify, you can certainly ask the graduate financial aid office about all the things, but I know that they will. Uh, if it comes to uh, in a, in a, like anything about uh, financing your education as far as like assistant ships or, or tuition scholarship award money, uh, increasing that, they'll send you back to me. Good call. Okay. I see there was a couple questions on programs of study. Thank you, Emma, for, for providing those, those connections as necessary. Okay. Are yes. the program of studies different from the program pathways? Yes, and so right now, program of study is sort of the the term that we're now sunsetting, and pathways is the is the term that we're we're moving forward with. So I would say the similar areas of program of study have either turned into pathways, or they were certificates we were already offering like school social work, alcohol and, tr and, and, and other drug um, certification, um, KIPHART uh, program for global and social um, development. Um, but then yeah, our other sort of program studies have been folded in or are already within um, a particular pathway. Oh, great question. Um, no one has chosen any pathways yet. Pathways will be chosen um, towards the end of your first year in the program. And this is again for full-time, part-time and EEP students. For our advanced standing students on the um, um, in the session now, um, you will come in, you've already chosen a concentration. So we've got a, got folks that are straddling sort of our two, our two curriculums here. Um, but yeah, advanced any folks have already chosen, you've been in communication and we're, uh, we're moving forward. You're in line with our current second year students. So, um, and then our new students are coming in under our, our, um, recently updated pathway model. Hope that helps. Oh, Yeah. 
Thank you, Stacey. Great question around um, gender and women's studies. We do have a certificate um, within um, gender and women's studies. It's not housed within Crown, but it's housed within our larger center um, on campus. And our students do regularly take those courses and complete that certificate. Um, so it's taking some additional courses um, that could count as electives, but would be all towards um, um, that gender and women's studies certificate. And certainly you can take those courses without going for the certificate too. Um, but absolutely, um, even with, within our, our school, you have a number of electives. So a lot of students are able to tailor um, their, um, you know, their studies to what their, their specific interests are. So thank you, Emma. Oh, on top of it. Yes. All right, Alexis, leadership opportunities available for students. There is plenty. Um, absolutely, we offer... Um, workshops, um, sessions, community building opportunities. Um, there's student organizations, there's student government, um, all within Crown, but we also have lots of opportunities within the larger University of Chicago. Um, there's other student organizations, there's graduate council, um, there's different standing committees, um, fellowships that students are able to take part in. Um, our leadership and career development team um, um, sends out information weekly to students about all of those opportunities and initiatives. Um, we have an Obama Scholars Program that students are able to take part in. That's an amazing leadership opportunity. Um, and then there's also funding. There's funding through Crown. There's also funding through the larger university to attend conferences um, for travel grants, those sorts of things. Uh, we've got a Washington week. I could go on and on about our, our leadership opportunity. So I'll stop there. So there's something to share when you come for orientation. <laughs> Yes, advanced standing students can attend the U Chicago grad orientation in autumn. Thank you for asking, and you should. Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll also have U Chicago grad at, will be at the advanced standing orientation doing a, a session for you all, but absolutely able to attend the giant hoopla <laughs> on that Tuesday in September as well. But you'll also have to be able to connect with them before that. Absolutely. Uh, question about, are there any clubs that students can join? Do we have clubs? Absolutely. We have uh, clubs. We, we got plenty of clubs and our clubs are listed on our website. Um, there's a link um, on our site to the clubs, if, if I'm not mistaken, but we've got about 10, 10 or so clubs and you can always start a new club. So every quarter there's a chance to start new clubs and organizations. Um, but um, yeah, and we've had, we've had several We've had more than, than 10 and we've had, you know, a few less than that in the past. So it really just, yeah, there's there's a lot of different clubs. And we usually go over and get a new list of clubs every year. So when you come in the autumn, you'd be able to um, to know which ones are active. Or if you want to start one, you're going to be welcome to do that too. Mm -hmm. Are there any big U Chicago sports teams? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know about big, but there's definitely sports teams. <laughs> Present there? Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. some sports teams. You know, unfortunately, I feel like we don't hear as much about them. I know if you're coming from a big sports school, I know we're coming fresh off March Madness. Well, I know the, the men's is today, but the women's was really the, the super exciting. So, um, so yeah, not as much, but there's definitely club sports. There's definitely intramurals. Um, I know we've been talking for a long time about developing some type of crown, you know, softball or some dodgeball, some type of fun, <laughs> fun league like that. But um, but yeah, not as much in terms of sports. I think maybe general Chicago sports we would sell, we would uh we would support. Okay. Uh the Obama um scholars program is open to yeah students in full-time part-time programs and also advanced standing. We had a number of advanced standing students apply. Um, this past year. So it's open to students in, in all the programs. Kristen, we have a hand up. Natasha? Oops, I'm sorry. Hey, Natasha. Hey, good to see you. Hi. Hi. Uh, quick question. It's probably just easier to say it out loud. Is there any fluidity between the programs? Like if I wanted to, because I applied full-time, I wanted to go in part-time for those two years and then switch to full-time? I could do that? Okay. Absolutely. Um, we do have students who you, you'll you obviously meet with a, an advisor on our team and we talk through what that transition would look like. Um, but yes, we have had students who've switched from full time to part time or from part time to full time um, in the program and we can help you do that. And just for clarification, so the kid part, Obama's like I would still be able to 
apply for those and be a part of it? Yeah, yeah. Students in both full-time or part-time programs can be a part of either of those opportunities. Okay, another question. Part-time versus extended, what's the difference? So extended evening pretty much is all of your classes are in the evening and you are doing field alongside um, your courses. Part-time day is your courses are typically during the day and field doesn't start usually until the second year in the program. So it's just a different kind of field schedule and then your course times. Um, that's kind of the difference between part-time day and EEP. Very awesome. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, just trying to make sure, is there anything we missed in the questions? So I think we, I think between the group of us, I think we got it all, but if we missed anyone's question, raise your hand and we can go, we can make sure we find it. Yeah, is that Alexander? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, so I actually have two questions. One, I was the one who asked about the KIPP part. Um, was the deadline on April 1st? Because I watched the YouTube, I watched a video and it says something about April 1st. So I thought I submitted everything, but I won't, I haven't heard anything back. Is there a way to follow up on that? Yeah, so we can, um, if you'd like to, so if, if you want to follow up with uh, Jessica Darrow or Christina Gross, either of them will be able to let you know. Um, so they're probably going through a process where they've received applications, they're probably vetting them and, and working through the process to, decide, to determine what their next steps are. Uh, so definitely, uh, you can absolutely reach out to either of them. They're both very friendly and they're very all about their program. So I, I'm sure they'll reach out to you um, quickly. Mm -hmm. If it's easier, if you'd like us to facilitate uh, an email, you know, certainly you can, you know, just email me directly, um, and then I can sort of f facilitate a uh, introduction for you. Um, but they would definitely welcome sort of you just emailing them on your own. Definitely. Okay. Sure. I just want to make sure that it went through with the video. Um, and then second, uh, I think you touched on this, but I missed it. Uh, for like additional scholarships or. So like, like, how do we connect with that? Because now that I'm in, it's uh, <laughs> how to pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, either you can email the admissions team or you can email me directly. I actually just dropped my email address in the link. Uh, we do have uh, a form for students to request additional funds that's available. Um, so we're receiving those. We try to have a response back ideally within sort of a week's time. Uh, sometimes it's a little longer, it depends on how many requests we have, uh, but typically it's a, it's about a week's time um, for us to respond back. Perfect, thank you so much. Awesome. Other questions? Yeah, Sam, I think I think we met last week. We can definitely meet to talk about orientation stuff. So not to worry. We'll definitely touch base. So I know you're bummed about not being able to make it. So we'll, we'll, yes. meet, we'll chat more. Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yes. I, I had this, this prior to, you know, taking my acceptance. So that's really good to know. And mm -hmm. that makes me feel a lot better about being able to cover anything I'll miss there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you guys so much. This was so helpful. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, other questions, things you're wondering about? Is anybody going to view the eclipse at least today? Is that a thing? Anybody? Alexander, question or eclipse? My hand <laughs> Well, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try. I don't get that good of a view here, but I definitely check on the clips. Um, I guess my one question is, uh, what is for new students, so I'm joining the full-time uh, program, but for what is like the biggest surprise that students come in or they forget to ask beforehand? Because in my mind, I think I've asked all the questions, but it's like, I don't know what to ask. You know, it's funny, someone asked the same exact question during the in-person session. And what the students said is like, they said, well, something, 
their biggest surprise was not so much what they didn't know. It's it's that they didn't anticipate what the quarter system really means for them. And, and we've heard this in the past. The quarter system of 10 weeks, and Aliyah, you can maybe say a little bit about this too from your experience, transitioning from a semester into a quarter, like there's the benefit you're now taking 12 classes instead of six classes over the course of a year. So you, you diversify and expand your sort of academic experience and that you move pretty quickly. So kind of preparing yourself mentally and academically to do the quarter system. Uh, Aliyah, I don't know if you want to touch on that or if there's any other thing else that came from that session. Yeah, I think that that's the, the course. I think it, it also depends on where you're coming from. I know I came straight from undergrad. We were at 14 week semester, so it was a little bit easier, um, but it still was, it still goes by so fast. So it's kind of mentally preparing um, for like, I think Nick, one of our student ambassadors, says a lot. He came from taking a break for um, a handful of years before returning back to school. And it's definitely about coming like in right into that first week, knowing that you're going to be starting readings and doing work. There's no no time for procrastination in the quarter system. Um, like there may be in more of a like a 16 week semester where the first couple of weeks are kind of just there. Um, you really have to, to be on it um, and just be, you know, planning. I think it's it's an adjustment but it it does i think when you're towards like the end you really do realize how great it is that you were able to take a couple more courses you're able to get to experience more faculty um in general it's a really good thing but it does take some some adjustment <laughs> in the beginning um i think the other one that a couple of our students during the panel mentioned was around um that they didn't necessarily anticipate the imposter syndrome piece coming in, especially being at a school like U Chicago. Um, and I sense that a lot with people that I graduated with, like why or why that I was in school with, like, do I, do I belong here? Am I supposed to be here? How did I get here? I heard that a lot. And I think students still feel that. And I think kind of coming in knowing that hey, that was thought those feelings may happen. They're they're natural and that's okay. But also knowing that you do belong here. You were admitted for a reason. You're choosing to mm -hmm. attend for a reason. And just coming in like that that sense of belonging that we really hope all students have. I think that goes away pretty quickly once they meet everybody and know we're we're all great and and you know faculty are wonderful. But just preparing for those feelings and hopefully trying to to, to halt them before they really take over. Because yeah. if you were admitted, there's a reason for that. And I think that that's really important. I think it ties in actually to this next question we have here from Rachel. Are there any recommendations for getting back into the swing of school after being out of academia for a full years, uh, for a few years? Number one, you can totally do it. Um, we've admitted you, so we totally believe that you have this. And I think going back to imposter syndrome, like it's so natural, I think for anyone coming back into the space, trust yourself. I think pace yourself, you know, think realistically, give yourself the week to sort of figure out your time frame, understand how much time you need to read, how much time you might need to sort of be prepared for class. I, I think you're, you're going to, you know, give yourself the grace of a week or two to kind of get back in the swing of it because you have, you know, five more quarters after the first, you know, and plenty more weeks after the first two. So, so you have a lot of time to sort of get into it. So, so don't sort of stress yourself out too much at the beginning about having to like get it right. There's no kind of like getting it right for a lot of programs because everyone's sort of journey and travel, you know, pathway through a program can be very different depending on what the needs are. So, I would just say sort of that. Um, and I don't know if the of our advising team, DOS team has any other sort of helpful hints. I, I fully agree, Ron. I'm sure Dana and Courtney, I know y'all have thoughts, but really give yourself the grace, you know, communicate with folks as you need to let your faculty members know, hey, I'm new to this. I'm just getting back into this. You know, it, I think that's okay to, to share that with folks so they know where you're at um, and can help and support you as, as necessary. We all want you to make it. We all want everybody to make it to graduation from this point. So know that everything we do is in, in service of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We definitely uh, always, communication is key, really. Um, and if granted, you're probably not the only one in the class that feels <laughs> that way. Um, I definitely have remembered feeling certain ways in graduate school because I took a few years off as well. Um, and yeah, getting back into Rhino's papers, you know, it's like, all right, this is a muscle, muscle memory. Is this a thing with academic writing? 
maybe somewhat, but like I, we share the resources and support services that we have. There's so much here. Um, and we're also welcome to, to chat with you as your advisors and, um, and strategizing or just like sharing how overwhelmed you are and you're like, okay, like what can we do? Or if you just need to be heard, that's fine as well. So we try to like, yeah, we, we are open, our doors are open for those conversations. And um, yeah, so we can assuage your fears that you're the only one because you're not, trust me. Yeah, I just wanted to just highlight the value of this oh, cohort sorry. model. Um, we're in these cohort models for a reason, and you are with your cohort for two semesters consecutively, two, sorry, two quarters, excuse me, two quarters consecutively. Um, and there, there is a beauty of a built-in support system within your colleagues. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you. I know we're just a minute or two over now, but so thank you everyone for attending. Thank you to our team here for participating, being available for the presentation and for the answers.